I don't know how they knew that, but they just knew. So it could be that because they have drilled down into an actual volcano, a very big one, extremely big volcano in the Mexican Gulf called Biloxi Dome, which is an ancient volcano, could it be that because they have punctured this, and there is now seven punctures in that volcano, that that has an effect on the Yellowstone Park? That might be something we could speculate in, because the Yellowstone Park volcano, according to scientists, has not been in eruption for over 200,000 years, and now it's suddenly waking up. And could we also be led to believe that they themselves, by doing what they did at the Biloxi Dome, are they pushing or forcing a glacial rebound? Because after the 20th of April, the entire planet has become more and more active on all seismic uh, monitors, and that is the entire planet, and especially around Australia, and especially around uh, Indonesia, and also on the Ring of Fire. We have a seafloor rise a day in the northeast part of um, Australia, and we have uh, a new fault line appearing in New Zealand, as I said, and these fault lines will appear everywhere. They're going to be more frequent, and our earthquakes is going to be more severe. So could it be that they themselves, by doing this, is destabilizing the entire crust, uh, meaning the tectonic plates, plus when we have this movement of all these tectonic plates, we also have to think about how many oil wells is there out there in, on the planet. How many oil wells, which is now being capped, which is not being used, all these tubes sticking down in the ground, and you imagine that your crust is beginning to slide, and that will be shifting. Wouldn't that mean that there will be more punctures and leaks of oil everywhere? Because after this incident in the Mexican Gulf, we have had a lot of oil leaks around the planet. And we have to take that in consideration, I think, that actually this oil spill here in the Mexican Gulf, I think, and that's my take on it, this is the trigger for something they want to provoke. And that, that leads me to think about uh, Asa Sinadine, which were interviewed by um, Carrie Cassidy, and she said they wanted to activate something down there in the Mexican Gulf, and they created the Haiti earthquake too, in order to activate something. So what is it they activated down there? Is it they activated a glacial rebound on purpose in order to make as much destruction and confusion and also by that create famine and also by that we have uh, pestilences coming, we have disease coming, we also now see that people are getting extremely sick in the Gulf area, we also see DNA mutations in marine life due to this oil spill. So this is kind of all the biblical scenarios we are we are witness, witnessing now. It is really coming to pass, and you can go read that in in Matthew 24. There you will have what's really going on at this moment. And the Revelation also says that there will be famine. Famine will come now because the loop current is dead and that means we will have a much cooler climate at the northern hemisphere, we will have less efficiency of sunlight, and that of course will create a huge disruption of the food chain, and if our food chain is cut off, what's going to happen to you? And that's what is going to take place because of the loop current is no longer, and I do not know when that's going to get itself reactivated if it it's gonna do that unless something 
miracle happening because I really don't see there is any end to this it is moving faster and faster earthquakes and earthquakes and it's I'm following the live uh, seismic server from USGS and that means every half hour I can get the latest readings from the entire planet's uh, major seismic monitors and they show extreme activity almost 24-7 there is no end to it and it all started after this this man-made I, I would call this a very very well-planned orchestrated genocide because this is devastating people in Florida Alabama Mississippi Louisiana Texas too Mexico Venezuela the entire Gulf is going to be poisoned because of this and people die of earthquakes and when we have earthquakes and especially in this uh, frequency we can also look forward to volcanic eruptions which is not in water but maybe also be in water but especially above ground and that will lead to a lot of air pollution and that will again cut out the sunlight the important sunlight uh, <laughs> yeah they have it and this is the one I have been showing from the very beginning of all this oil spill I quickly find out by looking at the first pictures we saw from the BP oil well and, and when I saw these pictures I said well that's not oil that's a volcano so I went on researching what is down there in the Mexican Gulf and this is one giant giant asphalt volcano and this is Biloxi Dome in this region and the water horizon so you can see what they have tapped into that's just going to be a, a huge release of pressure in this area and we have new Madrid line going down through here and right over on the other side here we have the ring of fire and right up here in this area here we have Yellowstone Park and it's all activated and we have all this oil so actually from from this moment on here this, this oil plume of 12 billion 672 million cubic feet of oil is drifting in this direction right now in an area the size of Connecticut and Rhode Island combined is a dead zone out here so that is a huge dead area where there is no fish anymore there's no shrimps there's nothing it's all dead but I don't have anything about the methane I just have this from now on and when is this gonna end I don't see any end to it because they will have to and they they don't have a choice they will be forced to keep on spraying corrects it onto the water and from the seafloor too in order to hide this fact that we have an ocean inside the ocean of pure crude oil drifting towards southwest so I said take action we 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 have to we, we cannot stop the the uh, the consequences which we see now on planet earth we can't do that but at least we can attempt to stop this process because this is progressing this is not subsiding this is getting worse and worse and worse and this is how people is going to look and it's going to be much much worse than that can you imagine how the fish are out there when they come in contact with this 
especially the mammal fish, because they, they have another set of uh, nerve system than the, the cold-blooded fish have. And they must have this sensation of being burned alive. And we have literally seen uh, dead marine life washed up on the beach and kind of look like they've been corroded or kind of burned. And that is the mixture of this crude oil and, and the corexit. This is what it's going to lead to. This is a picture from Kendra Anderson. Uh, I don't know if it's herself, but it's definitely a picture taken from, uh, yeah, I will call it a wi victim of this disaster. And on this one, we see what the assumed pollution will be in the Atlantic Ocean. And you can pretty much count on, this is reality. This is how it already looks. Because we are over the 74 days I calculated it would take from this point and all the way up to here and go to there. That is where the Gulf Stream returns. That is in this area up here. And then it goes back through Northern Europe. And that will take 74 days before the Gulf Stream from this point. Let's just say one gallon of water here. 74 days it arrived here and in all that time we have had seven columns of gushing crude oil and volcanic material gushing out here so now before the loop current and that means all the way up to the 12th of June where it ceased to function where it went into an eddy and has been like that ever since that is 74 days so in all that time and actually from February it is not from the, tw the 20th of April the, the actual oil spill started that's just the smoke screen this already is back from February the 23rd this oil spill of seven plumes or the columns rising up and gushing up to the surface and now we have an ocean inside the ocean of crude oil going in this direction plus we before the loop current died it was going in that direction so everything here is going to be polluted by corexit and oil and the corexit is diluting the the oil but that doesn't make it less toxic the corexit is 11 times more toxic than the crude oil itself and it's getting even more toxic when it's going to be mixed with the crude oil. And we see that now on the seafloor that we have this big dead zone now, which is big as a state. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's hard to it's hard to keep calm. It's very hard. And this is the result of uh, these 13 hours rumble that was at Yellowstone Park at the 26th of August 2010 and this was a continuous earthquake at the Yellowstone Park caldera so this is very 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 bad And everything is okay according to the press and TV because there's no talk about it anymore. If there is any talk, it's just about yeah, the cleanup process and it's looking good out there. And there's nothing to think about. They have it under control. BP has left the scene and everything is back to normal. Everything is beautiful. But this is just a smoke screen. This is my take on it. This one was planted here. Started drilling. They didn't know anything. They blew it up to cover up for this seven column leak and into a volcano. And now they have set it all in motion. And there's no way you and I can stop it. 
only divine intervention can do something to this.